This video is about our 16-year-old GCMAS spec system. It's been open access system for students and faculty, and the video describes the various service tricks and tips that we've used here on this system. I'll go over the service tricks and tips used on this GC Mass Spec system, and uh, it'll be left to your discretion if any or all of them are suitable for your system. And let me start. And let me start at the bottom of the list here, uh, preventing backstreaming and making life easier. So, making life easier, uh, I put in thumb screws wherever possible. And one location is over here on the side panels. All right, they used to be flathead screws. There's a, another one here, another one there. And it makes, if you have thumb screws, it makes taking off the access panel a whole lot easier when you need to get to it. In keeping with the making life easier and preventing backstreaming, the, this is the rough pump. Okay. Cute little Edwards 1.5, okay. and it's located about uh, two meters from the unit. Okay. Uh, okay, so I've extended. Let's look in here. This is the suction part. This is the exhaust. All right. But for right now, it's making life easier. Mount or situate the rough pump on a concrete block, and that makes draining the oil, which we do on an annual basis, easier. Then, right, this is the pump exhaust. It doesn't have to be rigid, uh, absolutely rigid. You can use Tigon tubing for connectors for the path and this terminates in the hood ventilation system. Right? You don't want the pump oil vapors in your lab. In the old days the oil vapors used to cause hard drive crashes. Of course that's when a hard drive, a massive hard drive was all of 10 megabytes. So, rough pump exhaust into the hood system, we've gotten taken care of that. All right, filter the air. Dirt and oil vapors are bad, all right, so whenever possible, we filter the air that's being used here. So, in order to increase air circulation, we have a box fan mounted so beautifully and ornately on, a, on the wall, and we have a filter, removable filter back there. The air that comes in, we have installed an exterior filter. And this filter here is uh, 24 inches by 24 inches by two, pleated. Changed about every four months. And it does collect dirt. Now this is the second air intake from the HVAC system and it's also filtered by the 24 by 24 by 2 inch fleet air filter. Right. For redundancy of critical subsystems, we have our UPS is for pumps and fans, right. and I'll go over the uh, more detail the UP the uh, fan for the diffusion pump. Right. But uh, in this situation, we have this is the UPS for the rough pump alone. We'll run about 20 minutes. Right. The power gets cut right. because we want the rough pump to run once the high vacuum is is gone. And then we have a, uh, for the diffusion pump fan, we have this UPS. And for 
This guy here, this is the UPS for the mass spec electronics. And then this is the one for the, the computer. Other redundancy is right, we clone the hard drive by every three to five years. So right here in this system, we have, let's see, the hard drive. Okay, we've opened it up. And in this, let's see if we file the cable, go to here. This, this guy here is not connected because all the way down here is our cloned insurance drive. And then this drive right here, this is the one that's powered up and is the one that's operating the system. This guy over here is strictly, a it was cloned uh, two years ago. So uh, the easiest way to do it is about every three to five years, buy a new hard drive. I like to get Western Digitals only because the uh, had good experience with them and because of the uh, free cloning software that they have so long as one of the drives is a Western Digital. Right. And the other thing. EPS is clone hard drive, spare used rough bump. Let me go over to there. And this is our spare rough pump. Buy it used, uh, about a uh, dinky rough pump this size lasts uh, about four years before it has to be overhauled, and uh, five years. It's, uh, it's variable. One way to keep it lasting longer is uh, to uh, have fans on it to keep, drop the heat. So that's why in this situation with our rough pump, we have two fans, all right? The white one and the black one. Yeah. They keep things much cooler because when it comes to vacuum pumps, heat kills. The rationale for a spare Rough pump is that when it gets time to overhaul, you set, you swap, you put in your spare, and you send the other one to be repaired, and then you maintain your uh, system uptime. All right, uh, power for the rough pump. The way this system was set up, the uh, all the power went into the central system, and then there's a feeder that then feeds the rough pump from this main instrument chassis uh, and so there's nothing magical about the AC power that comes from here so uh, you can make it so that the rough pump runs independently and uh, that's a choice we made and then we also have a power for separate power for the diffusion pump fan and uh, let me go into the rationale for the fusion pump selection and why we chose to have uh, separate power for the fusion pump fan. When it comes to GC mass spec systems, you basically have two choices for the high vacuum pumping system. You can either have a turbo molecular pump or you can have a diffusion pump. Since this was going to be a open access instrument uh, for general chemistry use and trace level samples were going to be rarely used in this system, we went with a diffusion pump. And under the bottom cover is where we have our air-cooled diffusion pump. So let me take the bottom cover off. And for a air-cooled diffusion pump, the only moving mechanical part is this uh, air cooling fan. Right. Fan is typically under 100 bucks, lasts a decade or more. Right. 
and uh, there's a modification to keep this fan working in the event that power is cut to the uh, rest of the instrument and uh, involves a modification of this wiring harness. So let me zoom in. All right, so the uh, modification as described in more detail in another video involves this uh, wiring harness uh, adaptation. But uh, for here, if we look down here, we can see the pump fluid sort of bouncing around and let me illuminate it. And let's see. And let me try and get the illumination so it looks better on the video. Right. And I have an offsite here. Okay, so it's off axis. And you can see the fluid bouncing around. Fluid level is in the full hot zone. And this fluid is 16 years old. It's never been changed. And the reason why we got away with not changing it for 16 years is that we have a departmental rule of no highly halogenated solvents. No chloroform, no carbon tet. If you don't have those solvents, you're not going to get HCl trapped in the diffusion pump oil. And if you don't have HCl, trapped in the diffusion pump oil, the chances of it becoming acidic and being chewed up are greatly reduced. A uh, more detailed description for the, this wiring harness modification is in a, another service video uh, that I put together. And uh, as with any non-factory modification, the preference that I have is to make it so that if push comes to shove, you have a plan B and you can always go back to the original factory configuration. So all of the changes are in the harness, not in the wiring in the original mass spec electronics or any of that. Uh, uh, you want to be able to return the instrument to the con condition and configuration that it was when it was initially installed. At least that is my preference. Alright, so uh, power for the diffusion pump fan, we've gone over that. Power for a rough pump, uh, room ventilation, extra fans. Alright, so that was with the filtering. Uh, you saw the extra beautifully mounted box fan by the uh, by the wall and separate power supply separate power supply for the diffusion pump fan let me just show you how besides this connector all right this is just a simple molex connector um, you, you buy a spare fan and you can figure it out uh, let me go and show you the uh, AC adapter all right, so this is our power supply for the diffusion pump cooling fan. It's a AC adapter. The out the input is uh, uh, 0.85 amps at uh, 120 volts AC. The output is 24 volts, 1.5 amps. All right, so it's your, your typical thing. Uh, and in order to prevent separation, uh, I use some duct tape for the AC power connector to just keep it connected. And then this plugs into our UPS. So if the power is cut out for the system, this fan will run by itself for a couple of hours at least, uh, uh, helping to prevent backstreaming. Mm -hmm. The other way of that backstreaming is prevented is that by having a separate power uh, with a UPS for the rough pump, mm -hmm. so this is our UPS for the rough pump, That r this size rough pump will run that little pump uh, 
between 20 and 30 minutes, giving it sufficient time for the diffusion pump to get nice and cold and uh, preventing any back streaming. And uh, then by locating the rough pump a good uh, two meters away from the main unit here, um, that also uh, uh, helps prevent any of the sucking of the rough pump oil fluid into the high vacuum for some particular reason. Uh, it's a good one. And the rough pump performance seems to be just fine. Then, in keeping with the heat kills approach, right, so what we have here, and uh, this is without the insulation, this is a typical GC in the exhaust goes into ductwork, which then makes it via not a closed connection. You want an air gap connection so that you don't have any vacuum being pulled on on your oven dampener. Um, that way the heat gets discharged into the, the exhaust part of the HVAC system. So uh, here we have insulation. And and then we have insulation around this. Uh, physical plant decided that they wanted to do this, so it's okay. And then uh, the only downside of having the insulation is it makes, if you have to work on the back panel, this has to be cut off, which is why this one here uh, no longer has the insulation on it, because the back panel has to be removed.